She goes, sitting with her back to the engine. Good morning, Joe Masters. I can't hear it all. I don't know. Can you hear it? Joe, good morning to you. Now. Hello, good morning. There you go. Um, I was just saying, oh, we're, we've just been, you've just been sitting with your back to the engine so you can uh, make sure that you know where you've been at least. Now, first of all, can we wish you, I know we're about 15 minutes late, Joe, but can we wish you a happy birthday? Did you have a lovely day? Thank you. Yes, I had a great day. My daughters and my husband gave me a right royal do, I can tell you. And rightly so. <laughs> yes, I had a good time. Oh, I'm glad you had a good time. We, several months ago, just to fill our listeners in, Joe, about all of this, several months ago we talked to Peter, talked to your daughter, and... Uh, uh, played a lot of your music, etc., and um, that was at the time when you were involved in a um, some form of competition or contest. That's right. Yes, it was the oldie competition, and uh, I, I very, I, I was very fortunate. I got two for the last twenty. Which is a mighty effort, really. I, I think tremendous, and so that that introduced us, that introduced us to your music, which was. Which was a, a sheer delight, really, and uh, and we made an arrangement at that time uh, that just coincidentally, when it got around to be June the twenty seventh here, it was just ticking over the end of June the twenty sixth there in England, which of course was uh, was your birthday, so that's the way it worked out. Oh, lovely! It was very kind of you to invite me on. It's our absolute pleasure, Joe. Now we, quite apart from anything else, um, we uh, we love your music. Um, and I, I had a go at trying to describe this to to your daughter some some few months ago, and I said it's sort of somewhere between uh, Noel Coward and Billy Holiday, which I know is a very strange mixture. Oh. Well, to take take that one, take you back to the engine song. When did you write that? I, I wrote that quite a while ago, um, or I suppose it must be about seven or eight years ago. Mm -hmm. I wrote that. And you were playing the piano as well? Pardon? You were playing the piano as well? Oh, yes, yes. I, I always sang songs at the piano. That's how I started, because I used to do an act, a variety act, when, you know, variety was uh, the thing here. And uh, I couldn't get the type of songs that I wanted, so I started to write my own. Oh, I see. And... Uh, that's how it all started, but most of my songs are about the things that have happened to me, you know, everyday things with the family and all different things like that. 
so did you when you say you were a variety act where where did you play whereabouts were you oh i used to play at the variety theaters in england that that was after the war after the second world war yes i i seen that uh, we went through all, all through the war that was to uh, entertain the troops you know and I, and I went abroad and i went to the middle east and uh, worked there and then when I came home, when the war was over, I did a variety act. And I used to play places like the Empire, and all, all the different Empire theatres uh, around England, in the provinces, sometimes in London. And this is, this so that's what I used to do. That was part of, a, of a, a general variety show, so there'd be a mixture of different acts on the one program. That's right, yes. Yes, moving on every week somewhere else. My goodness. And then sometimes I did review as well. I was in a, a you know, in a review where you kept the same cast. Oh, okay, radio. Uh, th- so you were you were part of that review. Yeah, that was a bit easier. Yeah, right. Um, with the in your variety show, were they your songs or did you sing everybody else's as well? I used to. I used to sing at the piano. And then at the end, to give them a chance to move the piano off, I used to dance in front of the, you know, the front uh, of the tap. I used to do a tap tap routine usually. Yes. (laughs) They were, well, it seems to me, Joe, they were great days, weren't they really? Do you think they were? Yes. Yes. It, It was quite different because you were on your own, you know, you didn't have producers and sound system or amplification like in those days or was it mainly just just ordinary acoustic uh, you had microphones but uh, they were very uh, they weren't very good no. if, you, if you got to a theater where the piano had a mic which came right up to the piano you thought you were in heaven yes i see but that that didn't happen all the time yes so they they were wonderful wonderful days and so you uh, when you were during the war, then were you doing the same sort of thing, entertaining uh, the troops overseas, etc.? Yes, I, when I was entertaining the troops at the start, we I was with a double dancing act. Oh, I see. I danced, yes, I danced with another girl called Pauline Gay, and uh, we did another double dancing act. And I used to originally play one number, in, you know, during the act. But when you were with Enster, you couldn't do those sort of things. You just had to do one thing, and it was a very poor stage. I don't, I don't know if you had any programs uh, on your television showing you this type of thing. You know, it was just a setup. When you got to a camp, you set the stage up and put the show on as best you could. Yes, pretty rough and ready, but I'm sure they loved you just the same. Well, it, 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 it broke the monotony, I suppose. Sometimes the shows didn't go as well as they should, but we did our very best. But we were quite young, and we were very patriotic, and we really thought we were doing something good, you know. I'm sure you were. I think I don't think there's any doubt about that at all. They, that's, that sort of entertainment, as you said, it was a, a, a welcome break from everything else that they were doing. It did, it, it did give them a break, and I think when we went abroad, it was even better because uh, we went all over England, we went to Ireland, and we went, of course, to Scotland. And then when we'd done all that, we thought we'd uh, volunteer to go abroad, and we went to the Middle East. What was that like as a, an experience going to the Middle East? Yes, it was because when we went. We had to go all the way around the Cape, uh, down in, in Africa. We had to go, because the Mediterranean was all closed off, and we had to go all the way around Africa, down to the south, and up to Durban, we came, and through the Red Sea, and finished up in Egypt. My goodness, that, that must have taken weeks, did it? Yeah, it took six weeks. Six weeks? Yes. 
Okay, so that was uh, doing it the long way. Now, even back then, were you writing your own songs or not as yet? No, I hadn't started then. I, I'd always had a um, gift for the rhyming, but I hadn't started writing the songs. I didn't start writing the songs until uh, I came back uh, after the war, war was just over. And I was doing cabaret, as I said, and, and the variety. And I couldn't get the type of songs that I wanted because in those days you used to have what they call point numbers. They were a bit comic, you know, comedy, uh, and, and they had a little story. Yes. I couldn't buy that type of thing, so I, that's when I started writing them. So other, when you were singing other people's songs, standards, if you like, I mean... What, what kind of genre did you mainly, for example, were you mainly singing sort of bluesy type songs or music hall, music hall type songs, or what did you used to go to? I, I, um, oh, I did uh, mostly the pop, I did some popular songs of the day, you know, the ones that were, were, were out uh, on the radio there, and I used to sing those, and uh, a variety of numbers, and I always had a classical uh, piano uh, solo in the act. I used to play Chopin or something like that in the act. Oh, I see. That always went down very well. Oh, I'm sure it did. Yeah. But I, it's just that I, why I asked you that question is because I can picture you singing uh, those sort of torch singer type songs. Do you know what I mean? Yes. But sometimes I do a number like that. Uh, and uh, there were various songs that were you know, popular of the, in the day, love songs and things like that that I would do. Mm. So then you started to write your own your own songs at all events and 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 play them. Um, did anybody else play them or sing them or just you? No, just me. Right. Just me. I did. I didn't. Um, I, di I didn't go in for publishing then because I was doing my own work. You see. Yes, I see. But later on, I, I wrote songs for other people. But I never managed to get anything uh, published. So, and uh, up, up until then, nobody ever recorded them then, did they? No, I had one or two demos made. I did have some demos made. But it's very, very difficult. It's always been very difficult to get songs published. Oh, I see. The way to do it is to perform them yourself. Right, which is what you did. Um, if you perform your own numbers long enough, eventually, of course, today it goes on record. Uh, when I was working, there wasn't there wasn't the same setup with the record company. Did you ever have a picture as to who who else might be suitable to record your songs? Because when we hear you sing them, it sounds so uniquely like you, and and, and we're thinking, well, I wonder who else could actually do a, as good a job of that as you do? Have, have you got a picture of somebody else who might? Well, I, some of my songs, I think, would be good for other singers. Uh, I'm very keen on uh, Alison Moyo for one or two of my okay. songs. She, she's a great favourite of mine. Yes. In, with the modern uh, people, um, I don't know that they'd want to do it, but they could change them, you know. They could they could up, uh, upgrade them to, to their style. Yes, I'm, sh I'm sure they would. Uh, well, I'm, I'm glad we've got your originals anyway. Now, what, what decided you to enter? I don't know whether this is a new thing in uh, in the UK, the um, the seniors' composition uh, contest or whatever it was called. What decided you to enter that? Well, well my daughters really got me into that. They, they, uh, they, I, I read about it in a magazine... And when I said, you know, I think I'll have a go at this because I am an oldie, <laughs> uh, they said, well, we were going to uh, do it for you. But we did it all together when it, when it came to it. They helped me with the recordings, you know, with the digital part because everything was done on computer. Of course. And did you have a few, what were your favourite ones that you decided, I, I think I'll, I'll submit that one. I know the... Uh, there's one that finally made it up into the top 20. Were there some others that you thought that you'd like to 
put into the competition. I, I spent day five altogether, but the whole family, uh, we, we, we made a list of all the songs that we thought might be good, and then the whole family had to vote. And then we whittled them down and whittled them down until we got five. I see. So, it, well, you, you had a captive audience, didn't you, then? Yes, and... Uh, um, yeah, House of Tears was the one that they picked out of the five. Okay. And I, I think that uh, um, I think there were others that that were better. Mm-hmm. That. I would have, uh, uh, not that I was there at the time, Joe, but I might have been tempted to have picked a, a, a song like Past Past Our Place or whatever it's called. I really like that song. Yes, I, I thought Past the Place. Past the Place, yeah. A, a good one, yes. And that's the sort of thing that I thought Alice Moyo could sing nice. Yes. Yep. Be- beautiful song. Mind you, having said that, it's not the one I picked out to, b- to play for you this morning, but uh, we'll, we might play that next week. It's a song I, of yours I like. So there you are. So you, you made it to the uh, to the final 20 with that particular song, which is a, a mighty effort. Um, yes. And, uh, and I don't know if my daughter told you, but uh, as I was the oldest... Uh, Contestant, they invited me to the launch of the uh, four finalist records. Oh, right. So, did you? Has that happened yet? Have you been to that? Yes, I've been to that. I went to a nice party at the BBC Club and uh, met Terry Wogan, and uh, I had a nice afternoon there. That's fabulous, fabulous. So, it was that was a lovely experience for you. Yes, it was. I thoroughly enjoyed myself. It has been an amazing year, really, yes. my 90th year. Well, so I'll get over it. A vintage, it's a vintage year for you. No, no, it's a vintage year, no question. Yes, well, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, are you still writing the songs these days? I know the one we just played for you to begin our interview today was 20 years old. Are you still writing? Uh, Yes, I still write a bit, and, and some of them, the older songs, I update. I write new lyrics to. Oh, I see. Yes. Well. And, and uh, I think Peter told you that uh, I'm doing a thing for the, uh, for the choir in, in uh, Australia, the Brunswick Road. Oh, yes, that's right. They're, that Will they be recording a song of yours, will they? I hope so. Yeah. I'm working on that now. Fabulous. Well, I'm, yes, I'm working on that now. So it's given me a new lease of life. Oh, I'm so <laughs> pleased. Well, if they do or when they do, uh, I guess Peter will get that to us and we'll we'll play it, of course, Joe, for sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, look, it's been our absolute joy. It's 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 been wonderful to talk with you this morning. I know it's extraordinarily late for. Uh, for you, well, maybe it's not. I think perhaps you get carried along by the excitement of your birthday, but it's well after midnight over there, isn't it? Yes, yes. I'm getting a sip of wind now. <laughs> I believe you. But it's it's been uh, wonderful to talk with you, and we enjoy your music very much indeed. I think it it has a wonderfully refreshing quality about it that you don't very often hear these days at all. Um, and we're we're delighted to play it here on uh, on Phoenix FM. This is a community community radio station that's based in Bendigo in Victoria in Australia, but it does stream as as you found out from uh, from your daughters and everybody else. They can hear us around the world, so they'll be listening to this, I'm sure. Uh, ha- I can't tell you how grateful I am. Well, very it- much, Jeff, for having me on. It's lovely to hear the music played. Thank you very much, Joe. Look, it's it's been absolutely our our delight, and uh, and thank you for uh, staying up and talking with us this morning. We've enjoyed it immensely. I knew we would, and we and we did. And uh, having said that, I liked past our place. I'm actually not going to play that this morning. I'll play that next week. But I thought I'd go with a song. When did you write the ad song? How long ago did you write that? Oh, it's the ad song. Oh, I think it must have been around about the same time. So twenty. I think it might have been about the same time. Because I reckon it was, it's as fresh t- today as it was back then. Don't worry about that. Yeah, that hasn't dated, has it? <laughs> no, I don't think it has at all. All right, well, it's been a joy to catch up with you. Have a wonderful time for uh, 
for your next year. I'm sure next year will be as good as the last one. And uh, I'm glad that we were able to participate in some small way in your 90th birthday. And it's it's been a pleasure to talk with you this morning. Thank you very much. It's raised my day, I can tell you. I'm glad. Really touched you off beautifully. Thank you very much. We're going to play the ad song now. And uh, and uh, my regards to, uh, to Peter as well. And thank you. Thank you to her very much for uh, arranging all of this, Joe. It's been a pleasure. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Our pleasure indeed. Well. And here's the ad song. No matter where I go, no matter what I do, there's a demon chasing me. Commercial advertising. Why won't you set me free? Each morning, noon and night, I'm victimized by publicity's plot. But having been had, I'm no longer ad mad. I don't want what the Joneses have got from poster TV and high fidelity. You're constantly preaching and screeching at me. It's saving labor for the nation and amazing innovation that surpasses all the others in one jump. Ultra modern, it's the latest, it's the most, it's up to date, but it still gives me the good old fashioned hump. It's the newest, never doubted, and you just can't live without it. What is more, it's entertaining in a word. It's colossal, it's stupendous, guaranteed to really send us, but it still deserves the good old-fashioned bird. And though the makers may insist that every crease it will resist be burned. Just very quickly, Val, before we introduce our next guest, Joan Masters, wasn't she an sh- absolute delight? Uh, hard to believe she's 90. Isn't she beautiful? Uh, isn't that beautiful? Yeah, yeah, 90. So, wow, that's uh, that's really living it to the end, isn't it? It was a joy, isn't it? She's, yeah. had, she's had a wonderful year, she said. Mm, mm, and uh, yeah. even although she didn't win the uh, the seniors' composition, because she her song made it into the last 20, she actually got to go and have a big party at the BBC Club and meet a lot of the BBC celebrities and... Uh, Fair dinkum. She had a wonderful time. I'll bet she did. And she... I think it's just wonderful. I hope I'm still doing things like that when I'm 90. Oh, easy. Oh, you're bold and you're not... <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> you're I... not doing too bad, Jeff. Uh, uh, yes, I'm... I'll... I'll get there before you. Let's put it that way. Um, this is the voice of your community, Phoenix FM 89.3. 